Hello everyone, my name is William Satcher. I'm a professor at Universidad Andina Simón Bolívar in Quito, Ecuador. And this work uh, has been jointly conducted with uh, Paul Cooney from uh, Rhode Island University in USA. Nicholas George Rogan, hereafter referred to as NGR, is a highly influential author within uh, ecological economics and he is even considered as one of the founding fathers of the discipline. NGR is classified among the most radical scholars of ecological economics and he is also considered as one of the authors at the origin of the concept of degrowth. We can say that his work takes a lot of importance in the current context of a broad ecological crisis. NGO was one of the first to try to integrate thermodynamics laws in economic theory and therefore tackle with some problems like scarcity, compound growth, and infinite capital accumulation. With his uh, seminal book, The Entropy Law and the Economic Process, published in 1972, and many other articles in the following years, NGR conducted an inter, and we shall say maybe a transdisciplinary study, and uh, this study led him to lay down a series of theoretical principles in this regard. We found that his theoretical proposal has been highly criticized by many authors from different fields, for instance, engineers, physicists, economists, or even industrial ecologists. These authors question the relevance of his theoretical proposals. On the other hand, the many scholars within ecological economics that constantly refer to NGR's work do not seem to have tried to respond to these critics or even take them into account. That's why the objective of the present work is to try to clarify and synthesize these critics. And uh, what we want to do as an ultimate uh, goal is to clearly identify the flaws and at the same time the potentiality of NGR's work in order to contribute to a continuation of his work in the future. So the presentation is divided into four parts. In the first one, we're going to lay down the series of very basic consideration of thermodynamics and entropy. In the second part, we're going to talk about uh, NGR's interpretation of entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. In the third part, we're going to talk about the critics that have been raised against NGR's work that emanate mainly from what we have called solar Prometheans. And we're going to conclude the presentation by main aspects of the work we have conducted and maybe proposals for future work. So first, the laws of thermodynamics and entropy. There are four and maybe five laws of thermodynamics. Actually, they have been known as the zeroth law, the first law, the second law, and then the fourth law. The fourth law is a kind of speculative one that has been developed mainly in the past decades. And actually, the main and most famous law are the zeros, the first, the second, and the third law of thermodynamics. One of the most famous one is the second law of thermodynamics, which states that in an isolated system, entropy of this system should increase. What one has to take into account, and that was somehow one of the results of our research, is that there is a variety of definition for entropy. And historically, different approaches have been used to tackle with the concept and have laid down a, a different version of the concept of entropy. For instance, we have the macroscopic version of classical thermodynamics from the 19th century or the statistical mechanics version of late 19th century associated to Boltzmann's work. And in the 20th century, we have entropy understood as a measure of information content within the framework of so-called information theory developed by Shannon in the mid 20th century. We think that to talk about entropy and its relation to the second law of thermodynamics, one has to carefully mention which of all the definitions of entropy one refers to. And this might be one of the problems we have with using entropy in the framework of economic theory and the interdisciplinary work NGR has conducted. With respect to NGR's interpretation of entropy and second law of thermodynamics, there are two main points NGR suggested. The first point is 
his famous formula, which is matter matters. That is to say, it suggested that physicists forgot to define the concept of entropy matter. There exists, in his opinion, two different types of entropy. An entropy related to energy, which is the common uh, entropy in thermodynamics, and beside this, there is an entropy matter, which is associated not to energy, but to matter and its flows. From that perspective, NGR suggested that there exists a fourth law of thermodynamics, which, in his opinion, had not been considered by physicists. And these laws refers to the fact that entropy matter increases in a closed system. And from that lemma, NGR concluded that 100% recycling is impossible. Let me try to reformulate in a more schematical way what NGR laid on with his suggestions. First, the schematics you see on the left hand side of the slide shows that the Earth as a thermodynamic system can be understood as an open system to energy exchange but a closed system to matter exchange. That's why we can say that Earth as a thermodynamic system is a closed system but not an isolated system. On the other hand, economy as a thermodynamic system is a complete open system open to energy and matter. On the second schematic in the middle of the slide, what we have tried to represent is the flow of entropy. And this is the way actually NGR suggested in his writings. We have the Earth as a thermodynamic system which receives a constant flow of low entropy from the Sun, Fs. And as the Earth is an open system, to energy, we have constant flow of high entropy from the Earth towards the universe, which is referred to as Fe in this schematic. On the other hand, the economy as a thermodynamic system also receives a certain flux of low entropy and send high entropy towards nature. The total entropy flow from the exterior of the economy towards the economy might be understood as J, and J would be the sum of JS and GE. So as laid down by NGR, what we have is the low entropy flux the economy system feeds upon is composed of two components, a terrestrial component JA and the solar component JS. NGR suggested that JE is actually a flow, or at least in a good part, a flow of low entropy matter and not entropy. He also suggested that JE is limited. That is to say, there is a, in some way, a limited endowment or ter of terrestrial low entropy capital. As GA is mainly composed of entropy matter, at some point we're going to exhaust the flux of terrestrial entropy matter and that was NGR's interpretation of second law of thermodynamics applied to Earth as a closed system. Many authors like Iris, Young, Craig, Schwartzman, Kaberger and Manson, Fleissner and Hofkirchner Khalil and many others have developed strong critics against NGR's work. We summarized the five main lines of critics in the present slide. First, these authors claim that NGR did not understand that Earth is not a thermodynamically isolated system. That is to say, they claim that NGR applied the second law of thermodynamics in a very naive and not rigorous way. This is not a very acceptable critique as, as we saw. NGR was perfectly aware that Earth is not a thermodynamically isolated system. And from that perspective, entropy should not necessarily increase within this system. What NGR actually suggested is that entropy matter increase within Earth system. Second, these authors followed a somehow quantitative argument. They suggested that human-induced entropy production is actually negligible in comparison to natural entropy production that would correspond in our schematic to the fact that the flux F would be negligible with respect to the flux Fe, the Earth's high entropy, a flux towards the, towards the universe. Some authors also pointed out the fact that entropy is a physical quantity and therefore, from that perspective, it should not be a value-loaded quantity. In other words, one can ask what is the good amount of entropy we should live with or what is the good amount of entropy production we should accept as a society. The fourth 
critic might be the strongest one and maybe is the one that should be more taken into account by scholars, namely entropy matter and the fourth law developed by NGR greatly lack physical grounds. This quantity entropy matter and the so-called fourth law developed by NGR actually, as mentioned before, there is even a suggestion for a fourth law of thermodynamics within physics that has nothing to do with N NGR's proposal. Well, these concepts developed by NGR greatly lack physical grounds and have been suggested to correspond in the best case to metaphors that lack potentiality to be applied to real situations and to be integrated to economic theory. Lastly, most of these authors argue that unlike what NGR suggested, economy is not doomed to crash because the sun is an infinite source of low entropy and a proper harnessing process of these low entropy flux from the sun should secure a sustainable future. In the schematic we saw, this would mean that in the sum Je plus Js, although Je could be depleted at some point, there is a possibility to constantly replace Je by Js to fulfill the need of the economy of J, the low entropy flux economy would need to sustain itself. So to conclude the presentation, we want to recall that there are various historical understanding of thermodynamics laws and entropy. One should actually mention that they are still a subject of research until today. And using them from a general standpoint requires special scrutiny. We can also say that the critiques have clearly demonstrated strong theoretical flaws in the general theory developed by Nicholas George school Rogan. But we can also say that they also somehow fall into solar prometheism or maybe excess techno-optimism. Maybe NGR's work was only a necessary first step and needs improvement to be able to better integrate thermodynamics and economics. Also, what we can say is that although conceptually flow, NGR's work asks highly relevant questions in the current ecologic crisis context, still unanswered by Prometheans and others, with respect to matter extraction, recycling, and capital accumulation as a whole. What we want to suggest is that in order to conduct a proper integration of thermodynamics and economics, we should pay more attention to the late 20th century work conducted by Prigogine around open, complex and out of equilibrium systems, namely dissipative structures, as the economic system corresponds to this definition. Thanks a lot for your attention.